Praise God. Psalm 24 today is Psalm 32. Let's read it in Psalm 31. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sins are forgiven. Happy are they to the Lord, Jesus, and and the Spirit of God. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hands were heavy upon me day and night. My heart was shut up as the sea Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And then you pray and <laughs> Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in times of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my helpless. You deserve me to go. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like a horse or mule, which I shall not be shown. You must be the dead, the dead, and the bride, or else they will not save you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in righteousness and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all for your true heart. Our second reading today is from Paul's letter to the Christians in Corinth. From now on, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, he entreats you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he gave him to be sin who knew no sins, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property with them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I'm dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you in heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy. He called your son. But the father said to the slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fat calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine who is dead and is alive again, who was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called out to one of the slaves and asked what was going on, and he replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back, safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave, for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, he who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatty calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me. And all that is mine is yours. We had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. the parabolic method, the parable. 
He never explained it. He didn't preach about it. He simply told the parable. And then you were left on your own to interpret it according to your own particular moment. And thus we have the great parable of the prodigal son. Or perhaps it should be called the story of the waiting father. So I want to uh, sort of elaborate that, boys and girls, by telling you a story that happened to my own family. Because Jesus knew when he told the story, like the story you heard just a moment ago, that these kinds of things happen in every family. Well, I have two nieces, and they're, they're, they're grown up now. But when Maggie was 12 and Grace was 14, okay, Maggie was 12 and Grace was 14, Grace spent the night with some girls when there was a little party. And a mom came and got them, took them to her house, and they were going to have a sleepover. And when they did that, they got up in the middle of the night, having been on the phone with some friends, and some older kids, one who was able to drive, 16, came to pick him up. Mom wakes up, the girl's gone, she calls my brother and my brother's wife. Don't know where the girls are. And thus started a great eruption of fear and anger, but mostly fear. It all turned out good. And in the middle of the night, they all went to pick up Grace, who had disobeyed. Maggie went with them. She was only 12. When they picked up Grace, my brother and his wife were so relieved. She was safe. And they hugged on her and they kissed on her. And then they decided to go to Waffle House. <laughs> and my brother said, Maggie, who was 12 in the back seat, said, We're going to Waffle House? That's it? And that's it? You see, Maggie could not understand. She does now. <laughs> she couldn't understand the love of a parent who chose to celebrate their little girl, Grace, who was safe and sound. Jesus said, God is like a father who had two sons. All parables are Jesus' way of explaining what God is like. You ever thought about that? What is God like? What is God like? Yeah. What is God like? Jesus said God is like a father who had two sons. A parent who had two daughters, two sons, two children, and one is lost. One gets lost because he disobeys. He's bad when he comes home. So what does the dad do? He throws a big party. Maybe at Chuck E. Cheese, maybe at Waffle House, I don't know. They have a great party. And guess what? Son who stayed at home, who was probably mostly like us, right? Like us. I mean, doesn't it just irritate you sometimes to imagine that God has so much love that God loves those people? And that person, oh, we don't like it one little bit. Because after all, that younger son didn't deserve it. You see, this story is about God's extravagant love. It's about how much God loves us. I got in trouble one time. I, I maybe, I, you know, I don't know, maybe it's Stan. You know, maybe it's Stan. 
you know, in children's chapel, or yeah, children's a little chapel. You know, I say, God loves you more than your parents love you. Oh, <laughs> In a sweet way, the mom said, you know, we had, we had a long conversation about that. <laughs> I said, well, maybe I should put it, God loves you as much as, as much as your mom and dad loves you. You see, boys and girls, we're going to make mistakes. You know, and sometimes we're going to be mad. You know, I sure was. Jesus wants you to know that God loves you so much, so much, even when we stray, even when we get lost, even when we disobey, even when we're bad, God's love never stops. It never stops. You know, when I was little, I'd go out and play, and I had a curfew. I didn't know what the word curfew meant. I just remember my mother would say, you got to be in by dark. Don't you be out after it gets dark. But, you know, now I know that's a very relevant thing. And I didn't know what that word meant either. But I knew it was relevant. What was dark for my mama was not dark to me. <laughs> but you know what my mama did? She would always leave the front porch light on. Always leave the front porch light on. Because my mama knew that most likely I was not going to get home before the sun went down. And she'd always leave the porch light on the floor. And you know what? My mother got old before she died. I was changing light bulbs at her house. And she said, be sure and change the light on the front porch. The light should always let on. I want you to know how special you are, and how much I love you, and how much this church loves you. And we love you. We love Kit Kat. This is Kit Kat, by the way. That's Kit Kat, right? That's Kit Kat. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you for your great love. We thank you that you are like a waiting parent. You always leave the front porch light on. And when we stray, and when we come home, you always make a great party for each and every one of us. Be with us now, today and every day, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good to see you. Okay? Glad you're here. How's breakfast? She's getting better. Good. All right. Okay. Somebody needs to help me up. <laughs> In case you don't think this is a fun job, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. All right. Please join me as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. Page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, all that is in the air and the earth, all that is seen in the sea. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God of God. Life of life, to God of true God, the God of not made, but the one made the Father, to reveal all things to the way, for us and for, for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became part of the virgin of the air, and was made man. For our sake, He is crucified and conscious fire, He suffered death and fear. On the third day, he rose again, the Lord's mysteries. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will 
Carvalhos. We believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world's world in all. Amen. Thee, O Lord, our God, 
God's light. Your light reflects within us and shines forth as we connect with one another in your love, moving through us and shining forth. All around the world, we hear children in all languages sing of this light. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, let it shine. Let it shine. And so we pray to God that that light would shine all over, over the people of Ukraine, now over one month, into the horrors of war, for those suffering in the country and those who are now refugees. And they feel the light of your comfort, your peace, your constant presence within agony. Let your light shine over Russians who ache to see what their government is doing and who are now feeling the effects on their lives as they are isolated, silenced, and economically damaged. Let your light shine over Vladimir Putin, may his heart be transformed. Let your light shine over those across Ukraine, Russia, Europe, and the world who are saying no to hate, no to violence, through incredible creative sacrificial acts of courage, hospitality, and love. With you transforming God, your life within us is not little, but a powerful force of healing. May the candle flame of light within each one of us nurture, uncover, liberate, and burn as brightly as you have created us for, as our hurting and beautiful world needs. This powerful light, may it shine, may it shine, may it shine. Amen. <laughs> Let us confess our sins against God in the name of Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may fight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good to see all of you. Please be seated. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Isn't it beautiful to welcome the children? Thank you, boys and girls, and some of you who are a little bit older uh, for joining me this morning. I know that there were many of you when you heard children serve, there was something inside that said, I had to go. <laughs> I need to be down there. Oh. Uh, and anytime you would like to do that, by the way, if you ever want to just come up here and be part of it, I knew you would. Yeah. But it's, it's great doing that. I enjoy doing that. And those are always the best songs that you know. Thank you, parents and grandparents. Uh, there's a lot going on. And more and more, we're seeing uh, uh, children whose special needs uh, are being, being met in wonderful and creative ways. Thomas, tell us a little bit about that. All right, uh, speaking of you, um, it was about uh, a little over a year ago that Redeemer opened its hearts and its doors to Scouts VSA. Started a Scouts VSA girls group here with uh, about five Scouts. Since then, we have started a Scouts VSA boys group and a big training group, which is co ed for 14 through 21 year olds. And now we have 26 participants. So we went from five a year ago to now 26. I think the group. Uh, Scouts are uh, very amazing in our troop, from getting the Eagle Scout, I mean some of the first girls getting their Eagle Scouts, um, to uh, doing all types of community service events, going on camping trips, um, you know, we have, if they're really active, they can go on two or three camping trips a month and do all kinds of activities. So, uh, we couldn't do that without, without them. I mean, Y'all have uh, greatly supported, supported the uh, group, whether y'all know that or not. Um, so, but it's been very great. So, recently, uh, less than 24 hours ago, uh, we had an Eagle Scout, well, a future Eagle Scout, finish her Eagle Scout project here at Redeemer. So, this was a uh, wonderful project. It was uh, restoring the playground. Uh, that Josh Wimberly had raised money for and donated to the church for the youth. And then uh, she also, we also created a walking trail that goes down to a hidden gym here on our property, which is the stream on the back part of our property. Um, and it's not a little bitty stream either, it's good flow of water. Um, it's very peaceful back there. So if you get a chance after church today, please not only make your way to the playground to check out you know what it looks like now there's also a uh, go around the back side of it there's a little path to be able to see there's a picnic table there if you want to uh, have a picnic with your kids one day or your grandkids or something like that and then continue walking down the trail and you'll get to where the uh the street is so coming up over the next week we have a handful of events so coming up this Wednesday night from 6.30 to 8, the girls will have their court of honor to uh, recognize all the awards and stuff they have gotten over the last six months. So if y'all would like to attend our board of honor, it'll be right here Wednesday night at 6.30. Um, and then next Sunday, next Sunday is Scout Sunday here at the church. So we'll have a lot more of you here. Uh, we'll be in our uniforms so you can see um, Everybody, it'll, it'll, it'll be real nice. And then uh, after that, after, right after service, over the parish hall, we will have a, a uh, pancake brunch fundraiser for the scouts. So, so come over, get some pancakes. Might have some other things as well. Uh, but this is an opportunity for the scout crew, uh, the venture crew, to raise money. Not only to help for the cost of camping trips. Uh, also, the cost of uh, some scouts who can't afford to actually be in scouts. It helps them out with uniforms and other things like that. It also um, will help out with uh, the venturing crew doing 
of community service projects, not only here at Redeemer that they have planned, but also you know throughout uh, throughout the build. So it'll be a great time, so please come. And if you have any questions, if you have somebody who would like to join Scouts, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. So thank you. Thank you. Our gracious Lord, our gracious one, our waiting Father, 
invites us over and over again to return, to return to this day. Will you join me as we gather around the Lord's table one more time? <laughs> Thank you. 